One thing you should do when you first get your XP2 uh, quadcopter with a GPS unit is you should calibrate this. And the way you do this is we're going to take the mode switch on the left here and we're going to flip the switch back and forth six times until this light turns a solid orange. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we go up here. The light is a solid orange. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this helicopter and we're going to rotate 360 degrees around like this really slow. You kind of look really funny doing this, but I think you should go clockwise to the right. So we did a 360 degree like that. Now we're going to go like this and spin to the right. Tilt it 90 degrees sideways, 360 degrees around, stop, boom. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but the LED light just turned green, which means we did a great job calibrating it. So it turned a solid green right here. So the calibration process is flip the switch about six times until it turns a solid orange, hold it flat out, do 360 degrees around, like so, kind of maybe a little bit slower than what I just did and then tilt it 90 degrees that way and do the same move. That's how you calibrate the GPS unit. Okay, with the GPS unit, we're gonna start it the same way we do with the Nazibor without the GPS unit. And now we're gonna plug in the XP2 and make sure that if you wanna do a return to home that you start it where um, you want the, it to land. So. You know, if you're doing a return to home function on fail safe mode, it's going to try to land wherever you plug it in first. We'll make it interesting. We're going to put my hat right here and see if we can do a return to home fail safe and see how close it lands to my hat. It's kind of an expensive hat, so I hope everything works out. Maybe I should just put it a little bit back like that. I can see with the GPS light here that there's no red flashing light which means we have confirmed there is a GPS lock. So I'm good to fly in GPS mode. I'm going to take off in manual mode. I'm in manual mode right now. I'm going to flip the switch to GPS. We're in GPS. It dropped a little bit, which is kind of normal. But now, let's see. Now it's doing a great job at doing a hover hold. So the GPS unit is way more accurate than the altitude stable mode. You can still fly it. Yeah, my throttle sticks in the middle. If I want it to go up, I'll just go up. So with GPS mode, you can still fly it in GPS mode. It's going to be a lot of assist on keeping where it's at. You can tell it's kind of like the, there's a little breeze. It's kind of trying to stay where it's at. Now, if I move it back, it's going to try to stay at the same altitude. If I move it forward, it's going to try to stay at the same altitude. And if I let go of the sticks, it's going to do as best job as it can to stay where it's at. It might need a little bit of assistance. So GPS mode is just a lot more stable altitude mode, a lot more precise, which is also great for beginner flyers. So I'm going to flip it to manual mode. Boom, it's going up right away. So I have to bring the throttle down. And again, I can go altitude stable mode to GPS mode, back and forth all when I'm flying. You know, I can even land it and take it off in GPS mode. I want to perform the return to home function right now. Is that okay? So I'm going to fly it out here. La la la. I'm going to fly it in manual mode. Flying it manual, manual, manual. And I'm going to flip fail safe. I just hit fail safe. Fail safe has activated. It is going up in the air by itself to about 60 feet. Oh shit. And it just did a really crazy maneuver. But 
You know, I'm trusting it. Hans is, well, you should get your camera. Well, I'll flip it out of fail safe. <laughs> so we're doing an auto return to home function. The wind is really light today, under five miles per hour. I'm Should I try it again? I guess. I don't know. That was pretty wacky. What so, well, I'm not even close to where your hat was. You want to try to recalibrate it? I don't think that's the problem. Fell safe. So I can switch it into manual mode, so don't be too afraid. Huh. I'm like, watch out for your camera. You're like, I'm going to protect I'm the people. I'm freaking out about the way it's supposed to do it. Maybe this is a little too easy. So that's the return to home feature. Uh, we're about a good two feet from my from where it started, a foot and a half, two feet, which is pretty good. One thing to know is that this feature doesn't work very well in the wind. Either does the GPS. If there's wind around you, it's not. It's going to be trying to compensate a lot for the wind and the gust. Um, this feature is not a feature you should rely on. You know, it is a worst case scenario feature in my opinion where you're really screwed and you really need to, you know, get it back to you somehow. You know, maybe it might be good to, if you had to flip the fail safe switch, let it fly over to you and then flip it out of fail safe mode. And as soon as you flip it out, you have 100% control of it again. Um, one thing to note is that when we did do fail safe, it was facing this way. It went up 60 feet and then it came back and then flipped a 180 degrees on you so that's another thing is if it's coming down and it's windy and it's not coming down straight as it should and you want to land it yourself you have to make sure that you're capable of flying this thing safely no matter what orientations it is at because you can't rely on the GPS to do everything for you and there's been reports of people who um, have flown multi rotors with GPS who don't know how to fly done return to home functions in the wind and they never came back home they just kind of went somewhere else so GPS very cool but not 100% reliable in my opinion cool feature add-on though I could definitely see a lot of applications for this it does work really good when it's the right conditions